Hello and welcome to Data Organization 101. This is the first video I'm going to do in this series. So if you have questions or comments, put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them all in the next video. For this video, I'm just going over the basics. Hopefully you already have a good understanding of how to use a computer. This particular computer is a Windows 7 computer, but the ideas I'm going over are the same for almost any other operating system. The way you do them will be different, but the concepts are basically the same. I've been helping people with finding lost data for almost 19 years. What I've found is that if the data is more than a year old, it's hard to remember very much about it. Based on that, I like to keep files that are more than a year old in a separate location from the files I'm currently working on. The real question is how do you organize the files you're currently working on? Well, let's start with the basics. Every computer has folders or directories. Depending on which operating system you are using, they get called either a folder or a directory. Essentially, they look like this. Every one of these is a folder or a directory. Here on Windows, you can see they are called file folders. On Linux or Unix, they are called directories. On a Mac, which is Linux-like, I assume they also call them directories. Regardless of what operating system you are using, they all have a separate directory for each user. So if you are logged in under a particular username, that user is going to have its own place to store its files. On Windows, it's under Users, as you can see here. Each of these is a different user folder. On Linux, it's under Home, and on Mac, it's buried a little deeper. Windows sets up all these subdirectories for you. If you're on Linux, generally you won't have this many subdirectories to start with, if any. On Mac, you will have a few subdirectories, but it's usually more trimmed down than what you see here. Windows doesn't usually like to show you this directory. Instead, it has what's called libraries. Over here under libraries, you can see it has documents. That's the same as my documents over here. Music, my music, stuff. This is one I made myself. Videos, my videos. And then up above, you can see favorites, which takes you to your desktop, your downloads, and a special recent places. And of course, these are all customizable. Down under computer are your drives. So if you have a secondary drive or a network drive, it will show up here. I'm not going to focus on these in this video, but I may cover them more in another video if I get enough questions about them. This is usually what I like to do. If I have documents like Word documents, or Excel documents that I'm currently working on, I'll put them in the Documents folder. I will then create a subfolder to divide up everything I'm working on. If I'm working on a specific project, like a backup software or video or something else, I'll create a separate folder for each one. Even if I only have one document for it, I'll still put it in its own subdirectory. And each one of these folders you see here is a subdirectory under Documents. For example, let's say I've got a new video I'm working on, and I want to create a document for it. I'll create a new subdirectory for it. Data Organizing 101. And then under here, I'll put my documents related to this video. If you have a bunch of music files, you'll put them under music. You can create subdirectories based on genre or artist. And then under each of those, you can have a separate directory for each album. You probably noticed here that I don't have a lot of data on this computer. That's because I actually store it on my network drive. But that's a whole other topic. What's important to know is that you can create these same folders on your network drive or USB drive or thumb drive. You can organize them the same way as I'm explaining here. It doesn't necessarily have to be under your libraries. The real key that I'm trying to show you here is the idea of subdirectories that have descriptive names. Documents is descriptive. Music is descriptive. They tell you what kind of files you can expect to find under them. And then subdirectories, so you know what kind of content they contain. The way you make it clear as to where your data is stored is by creating directories and subdirectories in a descriptive way. Make sure it's named so that when you look at it, you'll know exactly what it is and what the files in it are for. If your files or data is date sensitive, you can name them by dates. I find this approach works particularly well for photos. Let's say I created some music last year. I'll create a folder called 2016. And then if I created something each month, I can create subfolders for each month. Using numbers actually works better, as I'll show you here. 
because now when I do February, it puts it in order. But if I spell out February, you'll notice how it's not in order. Keeping them in order this way will help make specific dates easier to find. If you need to remember a specific day, you can add a day at the end so that it stays in order. When you're trying to search through your files, and if there's no order to it, it makes it hard to find what you're looking for. Especially if you just dump everything into a single folder or drive, it makes it hard to find something specific. You'll notice I don't have any files on my C drive's main folder. That's because I know I'd have a hard time finding something if I just dumped everything in here. I like to call this the root folder because it's at the bottom with the branches of the tree being at the top. You can think of this as the main trunk of the drive with each folder being a different branch and subfolders being smaller branches and your leaves are the files. If you want to figure out where a certain leaf is and they're all piled up on the ground, it's going to be a difficult mess to search through. However, if I know I had a music file that I created in 2016 in January or it was part of a specific project I was working on such as Joe's Wedding, then I could easily find it in its appropriate folder. It really breaks down to naming things appropriately and understanding where you're putting your files. A lot of programs like to decide where to put things for you, or they'll default to putting them into what's called a working directory. Oftentimes what that means is it's going in here. For example, let's say you're making a DVD and it puts your saved DVD project under the DVD maker folder. When you go to find that file, you'll have no idea where to find it. You have to rely on DVD Maker to find it for you. You need to be careful every time you save something from within a program. Let's say you're using Word. You go to save your Word document. By default, Word wants to put it under Documents. Well, if you leave it here, you're going to end up with a Documents folder full of random documents. But if you make a new subfolder under here, Joe's Wedding, and then name the file instead of just calling it my file let's name it something meaningful such as schedule outline now next time when i'm thinking where did i save that scheduling document for joe's wedding i can look under joe's wedding and hey look there it is that's a lot easier to find than scrolling through a bunch of documents that are all named schedule and I don't know which one is which. So it really comes down to making sure you know where you're saving your files by creating a structure. For example, if I have a D drive where I keep all my files, I'm going to divide it up into separate folders or directories. I might have a pictures directory and an old directory for my older files. Under old, I'll divide it up by year. And under each year, I'll have a pictures subdirectory. This is how I do my archiving. I'm also going to have a documents folder. So under each year in my old folder, I'll also have a documents folder. Then each year, I'll go through all my main directories and move it to the appropriate one within the old directory. If I know I'm done with something, I'll go ahead and move it right away. It gets it out of the way so I don't have a bunch of clutter in my main directories where I keep my current documents. You could also have a folder for a specific project you're working on. Maybe you don't want to separate the pictures and videos from your documents. Maybe I want to keep all my YouTube video projects organized together. I'll have a YouTube folder with a subdirectory for each video. I did one the other day with my kids at the Tempe Town Lake Dam. Now that I'm done with this video, I'll move it under a YouTube directory under my current year's old directory. And now it's out of my main YouTube directory so I can more easily see what I'm currently working on. It's probably best to actually have this old directory on a separate drive so it doesn't take up space on your main working drive. There are some technical reasons for that too. If you're interested in what those are, leave me a comment below. I'll base my next video on the comments and questions I get from this one, so be sure to subscribe and click on that little bell icon so you're sure to get notified when it comes out. Also, feel free to share this video with anyone you think might benefit from it. Decide where to put things for you. Or the fart.